how did I get into it? Was it? Yeah. Um, so you still need to be Sure. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be I'm delighted. You probably have to shut me up and stop me talking. <laughs> I, I worked in a violin shop in New Zealand for several years, restoring instruments and restoring bowls or repairing bowls. And I became more and more fascinated with bowls and bow making. And on a visit back to Ireland, I had the opportunity to spend some time watching a bow maker work, and uh, I was fascinated, and he offered to teach me. And so I moved back from New Zealand to Westport and worked with a guy here in Old Work for for three years and loved it and now I'm not fit for anything else so, <laughs> so that's that's what I do. That's and I'd like to do. add to that because the first time I heard you go to the people here I read it on the, paper, the local paper that uh, Gary won a huge award, an international award for bow making. I wasn't that huge. So, <laughs> well I mean it's very humble of you think that, you know, I just want to add that. Uh -huh. I read that with the kind of It's the quality of the hair is important. The quality of the wood is absolutely crucial. Is it? Absolutely crucial. And the, the, the wood that we use in bow making is called Pernambuco. Yeah. There's all kinds of different levels of quality of Pernambuco. Um, and it needs to be very high quality wood. Even then, I, I could make three or four bowls from very similar pieces of wood. I could even make three or four bows cut from the same plank of wood. And each of those bows will sound different on a particular instrument. So it's, you can vary the sound of, of an instrument. You can have a huge effect on the sound of an instrument with, with the bow. So people, when people order a bow, they, they might ask for, they want, uh, they want their instrument to sound darker or brighter. Um, there's all sorts of things you can, you can affect with the bow, and that's all down to, apart from how, you, how a bow maker treats that piece of wood, it's down to the, the quality of that, the quality and the qualities of, of an individual piece of wood. How much would the good bows like, be reminiscent? I mean, what is the um, I sometimes say to people, if they order a bow, well, it'll take a long time and very slow, but it'll be very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. <laughs> they, Contemporary bows made by contemporary makers, entirely handmade, will vary anywhere between two and a half thousand euro and, yeah. and four or five thousand euro, depending yeah. whether they're silvery, silver is used or gold or whatever. Um, <coughs> then when you start talking about old bows, particularly old, old French bows, <coughs> then you could, you could very easily spend two hundred thousand euro in the morning on, on one bow. Um, so there's a lot of antiques <coughs> with bows made by great makers from, say, the 18th and 19th centuries. Um, but yeah, it's a very good question. The, 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 the wood is hugely important. Again, because it's, it's part of a system. Everything is vibrating. Every part of the violin, every part of the bow is vibrating. Um, so the quality of, of the material that is being vibrated is, is, is crucial. Yeah. Mm. Hey, sorry for a personal question. Somebody gave me a gold plated string, E string, recently, Kath, and I just wanted to ask her opinion. Is it gold? Well, oh, gold uh, it, yeah, sometimes I use it. It's gold plated gold, gold but it, I mean, it's not real gold on it, is it? Yeah. They have gold steel, but yeah, they're painted with a bit of gold on top or something like that. Yeah. I never was into it. I always seemed to whistle. Although my E string last night was whistling, the, right. sometimes you just can't. I've been changing E-strings in this festival every day, and they you know, sometimes don't, they don't, the bow doesn't grab the E and, and, the, and it whistles, yeah. and, and I, it's just a phenomenon that we all suffer from sometimes. Do you think that might be the kind of humidity? Or it, may, it may be, I just, it's, uh, no matter what you do, you know, you think, oh, well, it's my fault, but it isn't actually your fault often, it's just something doesn't grab. Mm -hmm. What do you do if the string breaks when you're in the middle of something? It's happened. Very energetic. It does happen. It's happened maybe twice yeah. in my career. But uh, you, you, uh, in my case, it was the beginning of concerts both times, and I was able, I had to go off. There was no other violin on stage. It's not like somebody's playing a concerto and they grab another violin from the yeah. orchestra. People do that if they're toward the end of a piece. I, I've seen that happen. Yeah. Um, you just have to go off and. And it, and it changes the string very quickly.
Well, you don't have a you, you don't have a spare, no? Oh, yes, you do have a spare. You have a spare. You always right? have spares. Okay. You go and change. Now the E string is the most susceptible because it is just a piece of steel and can snap easily. It doesn't mean it's old. It's just yeah. if you do too much of a gesture and get carried away, it can happen. Yeah. That's just, so you just have spares. Kennedy, Kennedy does it on purpose. <laughs> 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 um, he, he breaks a string, whatever, and then he turns around to the orchestra, or whatever player does with him. Yes. And anybody got a string? And surprise, surprise! Something as well in his pocket. Yeah, orchestra players often and have in their pockets. But you can do right. that once, but you can't do it every time. <laughs> <laughs> He's a showman. <laughs> yes. If you weren't playing, it. If you couldn't play the particular instrument you're playing, is there, is there something else that, 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 would, uh, that you would play instead that would attract you as much? Or would you find that, that the, you, your chosen instrument is a means of expression for you that, that couldn't be replaced by another instrument? Or? I don't, yeah, I can't imagine any. I, I, I think I, I'm a, I'd love to be able to play the cello, but I, even when I touch the strings of the cello. I do not know how they physically put the string down. I, mm -hmm. I feel like uh, I would like that. And yet I started on cello. I did I did a Suzuki cello for a uh -huh. year or something before I was given about it in school, you know, in, in primary school, I suppose. Uh, but no, I'm glad I didn't choose it simply for the logistics of having a cello with you all the time, thank mm -hmm. you. Um, but violin seems to be the only instrument I can imagine. Mm -hmm. Right.